I'm Jonelle. That's Wayne. And you are listening to This Square Room. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And if you're listening on, you know, Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, totally cool. You know, you do you. We're not mad at that. Never. But you might want to head over to YouTube.com slash This Square Room because our boy is about to do Bazoi. the wheel. Is, <laughs> do we have another name for it? The Wheel of Tragedy. Oh, yeah, we had some sort of name Something. for it. Yeah. I yeah. Don't know what we called it. I don't know either. <laughs> um, but yeah, what I'm saying is you might want to watch this. If you're not, it's cool. You'll still be able to get the full context. But, you know, I'm just trying to help you out. Um, a couple weeks ago, Des, you know, was being Des. So as a bit of a punishment, he yep. had to do the wheel solo. Usually, whatever it lands on, we both do. But this time... It's a solo trip for me. Solo dolo. Well, don't cover your face. I know. I realize. <laughs> um, but I guess we'll just jump into it. So whenever you're ready, All give right. her a whirl. We're aiming. We're aiming for for this at least. What this, is that? This is drink. drink? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. I can't. Look. Dare. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> okay, so um, the reason I'm laughing is because I know exactly what the dare is. Already? Um, yeah. <laughs> you actually said it earlier. You can you can put that away now. We're, no, uh, we're can good. I respin? No, you didn't get... You were close to spin again, but not quite. Oh. Um, Did you hear me practicing? No. I was practicing earlier. <laughs> spinning? Yeah. No. So did, were you getting a uh, drink when you were spinning? I would have to start at drink. But I didn't want to make it obvious. Mm. So when I was... Uh, now I know your tactic. Next time I'm going to uh, let you do that. <laughs> so right before we started, I don't know if you guys remember last week's episode. Uh, we had a little smelling salt incident. Mm. And Des came in today and he was like, oh, like the smelling salts, that should be on the wheel. Fuck me. No, thank you. But I will Joe, Joe. dare you no, no. to do the smelling salts no, no. again. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all remember last week Des was like, Ugh. Oh, I have so many people I want to do this to and da 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 Damn. Karma's a bitch, man. That's crazy. Is this legal? It is. Give it a sniff. Don't don't drag it out. Just do it. Des <laughs> Oh my god. It's not even active? No, it is. I activated it before we did it last week. It's just a little salt. It's a little, little Himalayan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Joel. Why is there a Canadian flag? I don't like Canada. Made in Canada. <laughs> Joel. Joel, Okay. See, that wasn't that, that bad. That one wasn't as bad as last week. I think because you knew. La yeah, I knew what to do. Make sure that's tight, please. Because <laughs> that's your punishment. Oh, my God. See, that wasn't bad. Damn it. You know what my secondary dare was going to be? The only the only thing is it couldn't have come to fruition immediately. It would have been to go back to that sex club on, no. on by night. No. Right. No. So you're, no. you'd gladly do the, uh, the smelling salts. Mm. <laughs> the sex club is a, is a thing I I would like to be able to do. Oh, that you said like to forget. Comfortably. No, I would <laughs> I like to be able to do going. that comfortably. I'm not comfortable. Oh, we know you were not yeah, comfortable. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's gonna take at least eight to ten times for me to get comfortable. So then you gotta. The only way to do it is to do it. Yeah, but I don't want to do it. The only way through it is through it. Can we go around it? Mm. There is a song, like a children's thing. It's yeah. like, can't go over it. Do, do, do. Can't go under it. You Never gotta go it. through it. I don't remember what it was. Okay, I would have turned that sexual as a kid. Uh, no, no, I was a very weird kid. Very. Was weird? Yeah. A weird kid turned into a weird ass adult. <laughs> Ah, but anyways, you, you took it like a champ. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank it you. It was not as bad? No, no. Can you still smell it or no? No, no. Oh. The other time, like, I put it to my nose and I was like... <sighs> okay, it wasn't... No, you didn't. You're so <laughs> <dramatic>. <laughs> um, 
So I seen a post and I have mixed feelings about this post. Okay. The post says, I am not required to explain something that is beneficial for me. Like in your. Sure. Now, the reason I have mixed feelings about this is it depends on who you're talking to. If, and it depends on who you are. Why? I mean, I'm sure you're going to give me more context to it. But what I'm thinking is it depends on who you're talking to. Like if you're a kid, you know, your parents are going to ask oh, for explanations okay, 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 where okay, your okay. teacher is. But if you're also the type of person that goes by the beat of your own drums, like if you're the type of person that doesn't give explanations, mm-hmm. like what I'm taking from this, just from that title that mm-hmm. you gave me, is that like if I'm doing something for my own good, like if I say no, I don't need to justify Explain, to you yeah, yeah. why it's a no. Yeah. Like if I am uncomfortable with something or if I want to remove myself from a situation or I don't want to attend a party and I, I don't say wanna, no. Yeah. Right. That's why I have mixed feelings because that I agree with. But however, if you are with a significant other and you're just like, no, even if it's for your own benefit, beneficial for you for whatever reason i feel like a slight explanation is required with a significant other yeah yeah fair Mm -hmm. but like you said if it's a child and a parent then okay watch who you're talking to because i'll punch you in your mouth well okay i didn't say all that but okay Um, i felt like that's where we're going with that i didn't say that so you think it's okay just depending on who you're talking to i think depending on what it is Mm -hmm. and who it is and who you are if you're the type of person if you're the type of person that always you know gives context and then all of a sudden you're not giving context it's fair that people are gonna question that right if but that's why i said it depends on who you are because if you never do then it's like that's no surprise but also i think in certain cases you do need to it so is it, it's, requi- yeah. it's not a black and white uh, thing. yeah that's what i thought too and like I, it was an instagram post and i read a couple of the comments and people were just agreeing to it like point blank yeah like no if i don't want to do something i'm not doing it that's that Mm. i'm like you guys are weird bro you guys are weird like i'm not saying that i explain everything i do because i damn well don't but that's because i probably don't have an explanation like people be like hey like i don't want to go to that party because there's people i don't like i don't want to go to that party because whatever reason i normally don't have a reason like if my brain's like "Ah, sometimes like you just don't want to you're just not feeling it yeah. is is a, is valid a reason, reason. Yeah, yeah that's usually course. my reason so mm-hmm. to people like oh you never have a reason like, i don't know that's just my reason once i hear something my brain will say yes or no usually and chances no. are it's usually <laughs> no yeah exactly so when i read it i was like mm, uh, it's not that simple so please internet calm down because it's not that simple <laughs> you're looking at me like okay yeah well because i when you initially phrased it and you're like oh like what if someone says they're not required to you know give a reason i thought there was like a story mm-hmm. behind it or something no that's all it said oh. and i was kind of like mm-hmm. well yeah so then my answer to that is like it definitely it's it's a case by case yeah mm-hmm. oh i didn't even tell you what i almost lost my mind at work what mind you have to have one to lose it uh the one that i was looking for <laughs> uh gotcha okay what happened <laughs> so um the shift started and there's a friend that i haven't seen in a week or so whatever they haven't been at work so we'll see them oh hey hi hug da, da, da. there's a supervisor walking by who i have never in my life spoken to the supervisor we work the same shift but we have never spoken i know who you are i don't care who you are is that you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was like, what? at first I thought it was like a lawnmower outside, like just, a zzz, <laughs> but then it kept, it was like a rhythmic. And I was like, that is a vibration of a phone. Yeah. So I was just. Surprise your phone still even works. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> I'm genuinely surprised no, it works. I'm more than surprised, but don't do that. Please. I'm not jinxing it. Knock on wood. Like I don't, you know. Um. So <laughs> I see the supervisor. He walks by and I'm just like, ugh, whatever. So a little bit later, um, my supervisor messages me and he's like, hey, can you meet me downstairs? I'm like, okay, cool. So I go to the office and he sits down. I sit down and I, I'm already like, oh boy, the fact that we're in an office, oh boy. So he's just like, what's going on with you and that girl? 
what girl you know what girl and i'm like nothing oh somebody complained that they saw you hugging her i said yes i hug a lot of people i haven't seen her in a while blah blah do you think that's appropriate i'm sorry what's inappropriate about it now <laughs> now this is where i was like des relax yourself because i was starting to get upset but then he had complained about something else to another supervisor um, about the girl and me. Mm -hmm. um, one day we were sitting down and we we're looking in my phone and her head was on my shoulder to kind of see in my phone. So he had told another supervisor to talk to me about that. But don't tell them that it was him that said it. And obviously they had to have because you know that it's they looked at me and they laughed when they said it. And they're like, Des, you know, you got to remember, you know, in his religion, you know, his culture, they that's inappropriate. I'm like, that's not my problem. That's his problem. I do think it it's you can't really take your personal like culture out on people like at work, like your your values outside of the workplace. Exactly. If it was like workplace inappropriate, then that's one thing. But culturally, you can't project Thank your culture you. onto other people. So fair. When he's going on about, oh, um, do you have to take breaks with her? Do you have to do this? Do, I'm just like, what are you, t like, what are we, t what, are, what, are, what is the issue that has to do with work? So I just stopped talking and I let him go on and on and on and on. I'm like, okay, whatever. And I let it go. And as the night went on, I was fuming. When I say fuming, like I was ready to like walk out strike. Like wow. <laughs> I was pissed and i talked to a couple people about it and they were just like whoa like what do you mean you can't hug somebody i'm like if it was like a hug and like a oh yeah i get it or if the person wasn't uncomfortable with it exactly yes. engaging in the hug as well so and and it's not that he saw the hug it was his friend that saw the hug mm. and that's the one i don't talk to so as soon as he saw i was like this is gonna turn into something mm -hmm. so then okay fine let it go um, not really, but I kind of let it go. So then I was telling one of the ladies about it, another lady on a different shift where I was telling her about it. The next day uh, we came to work. She came to our meeting because we have a group meeting first. She came to our meeting. She gave me a hug. She gave another guy a hug. She gave another guy a hug in front of him. And he didn't say a word. He was smiling. In fact, oh, hi, how are you? And I'm like, Oh, so that's not inappropriate. Because when he told me it was inappropriate, I said, is it inappropriate because we're young and black? No, 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 no. That's not it. As far as I'm concerned, it looks like that's it. Because mm -hmm. the lady that came around and gave everybody a hug is a white lady. And I even said to him, I was like, I hug this person. I hug this supervisor. I hug that supervisor. I've never once been told that was inappropriate. I've seen managers hug supervisors. I've seen managers hug, you know. Peasants. I don't, I don't know what they're called. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Common. Common oh, folk, You have common people folk. that work with you that yeah. watch I don't know. Yeah, I'm just joking with you. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, you know, it's obviously because, and, and this is the part that I was kind of like, okay, Des, wrapping my head around is when they see two young people of the opposite sex, automatically. They're fucking. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Automatically. There's that hug, a, you might as well have put your dick in I there. might as well have done it on the belts, <laughs> on the machines, raw dogging. Someone would probably say they saw it too. Cluck, cluck, goose. <laughs> it's not that I said cluck, cluck. <laughs> it's that I said gloose. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you? It's actually all of the above. Oh, really? It's everything. It's, everything? Oh. it's the fact that what does that have to do with fucking on the fucking conveyor belt? I thought about what the chicken does that story. Have to Oh, the fuck it is. Yeah. So you have fucked chicken raw. Oh, Was the story you? I hate you so much. <laughs> no, but like, okay, I you're thinking about it, but in context of this conversation. Makes no sense. Nobody watching is like, oh, yes, Des is referring to a week ago when they read no. a story. No. So out of context. I, it just popped in my brain, Joe. What do you want me to do? And it's duck, duck, goose, but I get it. You're trying to say cluck, cluck because of the chicken, but no. And then what the hell is a goose? I don't know. Des, it was I just, don't know, you just okay. took three L's <laughs> and none of them. Love, live, life, then I'm dead. Shout out Lil Wayne. I was saying none of them is uh, even included you no. getting it in with that girl from work. So. Not at all. And like the reason why it rubs me the wrong way, and I know it's because we're young, 
is because there's a supervisor who, an older lady, and she always asked me to help her. There's times where me and her are like in the basement alone and coming upstairs and nobody has nothing to say. There's moments where I'm in an office with one of them. Nobody has nothing to say. But I'm in the open with everybody giving somebody who just got to work a hug. And all of a sudden, it's inappropriate. Sometimes no problem. people go looking for no trouble. problem. You know what they say? If you look for something, you always find always, it. Always, always. Like, if you are great 99.9% .9 of the time, but there's one thing that, like, That's you've done once. See. But, like, yeah, if you fix it, it's like when... um. When people say, like, you go looking through someone's phone. Mm -hmm. Like, even if they're not cheating, you can, like, look. Like, if you convince your mind that, like, oh, like, they're liking someone's pictures. Eh, eh, last ah, week. I, You're not the only who can refer <laughs> to last week. Or, um, oh, like, why do they follow this account? This mm -hmm. account. It's, like, it's a meme account. Like, I can't control what they post or, or anything like that. Yeah. Oh, oh, you're talking to this person a little too flirtatious. And you're, like, oh, it's this is my cousin. And you're, like, oh, oh so you're yeah, a cousin yeah. fucker now? Like, <laughs> Your cousin fucker. I'm just saying. Well, that was a funny one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah look, look at these that callbacks to all these episodes. Thank that you. But the point is, if you're looking for trouble, you will always find always. it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, but I was pissed. I think that happened at like 2 a.m. He had that conversation with me. I did not clean a fucking thing after that. I didn't do nothing except sweat and rant. Oh, so just a typical day for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the norm. What, yeah, like, yeah. what are you doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, <laughs> since you must ask. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I'm not sweating and was, ranting. I'm ranting and sweating. <laughs> I was going to leave work. I was like, I'm leaving, guys. And a couple of people talked me out of it. They're like, Des, you know, don't leave. You know, yeah, I get why you're upset. Don't leave. They I would like, have said the same. Like, don't leave over it. But, like, you're justified for they sure. They were like, I, I was going to leave because I know I'm not doing nothing for the rest of the night. And what I love about the the half the team I have, because half of them are new and I don't really talk to them. The ones that know me, they know that, like, okay, if Des is upset, like, you know, let's just kind of. Pick up the slack. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Because I do that for them all the time. So I can understand. Okay, that's I, good. If you do it for them. Yeah, yeah. And they do yeah. it for you. That That's a good team. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. our, our supervisor isn't a good leader. We just do those things behind his back. Right. Yeah. So I was. Like looped. you're saying it's a good team to no fault of his though. Like you guys yes, just yeah. do your own thing and work exactly. well together. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, yeah. No. And I'm still pretty upset about it. Um, it's not done because of my pettiness. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not going to let this one slide, bud. You never let anything slide. Nothing. You hold on. Nothing. You probably have grudges from like years ago. I, I do. remember you said your mortal enemy is someone. Does he still work there? Oh no, no, he got fired. Oh, maybe you told me that. I don't. I yeah, can't remember. He got I just know that you like somebody's nipple. A guy. Well, maybe you did say that. I, I if anything, so. you probably like had some like voodoo and like you oh, manifested. Oh god, I was happen. so happy. I was yeah. so happy. <laughs> um. Have you heard of those? Um, the like am i the asshole reddit stories yes well the algorithm for months now like it's nothing new but like the algorithm keeps showing them to me and i'm like i've never gone on reddit and read any myself mm -hmm. and i'm like why don't we do it on here i'm like first of all it's kind of like what we do whether Where it's it like <laughs> the listener questions and stuff or like you telling a story like am mm -hmm. i the asshole for uh hugging someone at work or like if i tell a you know personal story so i'm like I don't read other people's business because because that's what we do here. that's what we love to do you know um so these are just random ones i guess just some that are they're like recent but they're not like today recent they're mm. like a week ago ish um <clears throat> let me see what about this one okay is it long no not at all okay Am I the asshole because I don't want to spoil my stepkids? I have a 14-year-old daughter from a previous relationship, and my wife has two sons, 16 and 13. I had how old, Sorry, how old is the daughter? 14. Mm -hmm. Okay. I had a vasectomy after my daughter to make sure I won't have other kids. I spoil my daughter however I can. This includes uh, brand clothes, expensive schools, and the best electronics, and before anyone decides that my daughter is a brat, I would say that she is an extremely well-behaved kid. The problem is that my wife and her ex can't afford the same for their sons, and they are angry that our kids have completely different living situations while living in the same house. 
My wife thinks I should be spoiling her sons too, but I can't afford it. So I told her that's not my problem. And they have two parents who should be spoiling them. And then he also edited, he had to edit, and he said, um, I've been thinking about your comments and I think you are right. I can't treat kids that live under the same roof differently, so I asked my wife to move out of my home for now. <laughs> we'll be trying counseling and we will see how that goes, but if I have to choose between her and my daughter, it's always going to be my, my daughter. daughter. Yeah. She is not happy as she has a low-paying job and moving out means downgrading their lives. Do you feel like he's the asshole? Um, uh, I want to say a, a, a slight bit. I, I understand what he's trying to say, but the way he's going about it, I don't think I would do it like that because I would feel like an asshole. Mm -hmm. um, yes, this is my son. And before you guys got here, this is the treatment he got. Mm -hmm. I'm not changing that treatment just because you guys are here. If me and my son have a good relationship... And well, they're not asking him to downgrade the, how he treats his daughter. He's going to have to because he said he can't afford to upgrade them the to what she's at. Fair. The only thing I think is, well, the thing is, he's saying he doesn't want to as well. He did say he can't afford it, but like the the title is "Am I the asshole because I don't want to spoil my stepkids?" Now, I think that if you take on that role, you marry someone with children, like you have to take on that responsibility. Now, I don't think he's obligated to, especially if he can't send his um to private school. stepsons to the private school and stuff but like you know you can get them electronics every now and then you can you can spoil them every now and then rather than just being like yeah i'm not doing anything but yet they're See, supposed to be my stepkids i don't think he's not doing anything i think he's not doing what he's doing for his daughter for them and that's what makes the difference mm. if i get my like if i if i'm him and i get my daughter the brand new iphone and I get you guys like a little Nokia something. I get what he's saying though. It's like, yes, like I'm helping to raise these children, but, but like you're both if, here. If and his you're both daughter capable, only has him and the stepmom, then that's different. That's fine. But his, the boys have the stepdad, mom, yeah. and the biological exactly. dad. Exactly. You guys have three in a sense. In a sense. So it's like if. And my wife, or yeah, he said his wife, right? Uh huh. Obviously and then to, to can't tell, afford to, to kick spoil her my out? daughter. To kick her out? You have a problem with everyone in the same household and me treating the kids differently. But I'm not going to lie to you. The way he's going about it is making is, him the he, asshole. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You can justify, um, hey, I can't afford to send these kids yeah, to private school as well. Yeah, and I'm not going to downgrade well. my daughter. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna, right. He sh nor no, should yeah. he have to, nor exactly. should she be subjected to that. And especially, she's not a brat. She's a good kid. She's yeah. well-behaved. Yeah. She deserves everything and more that her father sure. can give her. As long as he's not completely neglecting yeah, 100%. the boys. Like, I do think, like, you take that on. You yeah, married you a woman you with do. kids. It, they didn't pop up. You need to be able to yeah. take on that responsibility and, like, make all the kids feel like they are equally loved. And from what he, from the sounds of it, they live in a, you know, probably a decent. nice, yeah, decent house. And now she has to downgrade. So, therefore, you being with me was an upgrade. Your kids are now in a decent home. Mm -hmm. with xyz whatever because of you know the well clearly the job he has compared to the job she has mm -hmm. so you want me to do what but only because of how he's going about it i say he is the asshole yes, I... but i see why there could be some justification what happened oh <laughs> you, the way you like stopped yourself it like scared me <laughs> there was like a bug or something is he the asshole? Guilty. Guilty. <laughs> I'm like this one from am I the asshole to guilty or not? Because it is, <laughs> I guess it's kind of the same. Guilty being the asshole. Yep. Here's one that I think is kind of like in a similar realm. Um, it's a little bit longer, but not long. Uh, my ex cheated on me for most of our relationship. Oh, sorry. The title. Am I the asshole for refusing to buy my ex's daughter a birthday gift? My ex cheated on me for most of our relationship. I found out during my pregnancy with our daughter that he had another girl pregnant too. My daughter was a June baby and theirs was an October baby. Mm. They also got married that following February. To say things between us have been tense is an understatement. That's not your Ex's ex. Ex's wife didn't know. Hmm? No, <laughs> that's not your ex. You were just a side thing. Get out of here. Oh. Ex's wife didn't know immediately that he was with me or that we had been together since we were 15. So I think that. Oh, 
she was the main but got she was downgraded. the main side thing Mm-mm. Yeah, um, or that we've been together since we were 15. She hated me for overshadowing her own pregnancy with mine. She hated me even worse when she needed an emergency C-section and had so many complications that a hysterectomy had to be carried out. You know what that is? Mm -hmm. Remove all the lady parts. All the internal ones. I'm confused. He married her and she hates you? Okay. Um, Okay. The tension between us... The tension between us all then was at its worst. Ex's wife wanted me to give up my daughter for them to raise both girls together as, quote, real sisters. And when I refused, we had all the drama. I don't even think that she would have been able to love my daughter had I done that. But I think she wanted more than I think she wanted more than one badly enough that she thought my daughter would do since she was already born. I get it because she couldn't have any more kids. So she's like, Mm -hmm. give me yours. Like, what? (laughs) X and I now communicate through an app mostly. We share custody of our daughter, 14, and exchanges happen at school pickup time to minimize the contact between us. This has worked for many years, though I know not ideal for my daughter overall. My daughter and her half-sister have a very high conflict relationship. It's over me and X's wife. X's daughter has picked up her mom's attitude towards me and dislikes me and believes I keep her sister from her, quote, real family. And my daughter doesn't like X's wife, which annoys her half sister. This has been communicated me, to me a number of times by my daughter and also by my ex, who will send random texts about it. I never respond because our mandated communication is done through the app. X and his wife had some financial problems over the last six months. For my daughter's birthday, she got a gift card, um, a card and a gift card, and my ex told her in advance he wouldn't be able to get her much. I was able to get her a present as normal, though. I splurged a little this year and got my daughter a gaming laptop. She was so happy. Ex became aware of this when my daughter spent a bit of time with her grandparents, and she asked them if she could bring the laptop to their house. Ex asked her about it, and she told him I bought it as as a birthday gift. Now... X's daughter's birthday is a couple of weeks away and he wants me to buy her a gift, something I've never done before. He said the money situation is still tight and he doesn't want her to get nothing. I told him I would not be buying her a gift and he blew up the app and my phone saying I should be doing this so his daughter isn't left with a lackluster birthday. X said I have never done anything to help the dynamic with the girls and never cared about the pain he and his wife were in uh, and this was one thing I could do. Am I the asshole? <sighs> At first, I wanted to say yes. Um, Why did you want to say yes? She started it off with no, no, no. this man cheated and lied. No, no, no. So when she said he cheated, and because I knew it had to do with the kids, mm-hmm. him cheating has nothing to do with the child. Mm-hmm. It has to do with him. So uh, originally, I was like, oh, here we go. And then as she kept talking and explaining the story, I'm like, okay, you and this other, you know, the wife Mm -hmm. are obviously bitter towards each other. Mm -hmm. What the wife asked you might have been crazy. However. The wife? Yeah. Because remember, the wife is like, oh, you know, give us the daughter and we'll. Oh, that part. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, So. mm -hmm. When she got to the, my daughter's now 14, I'm like, y'all been doing this annoying nonsense Yeah, because both this girls are 14. Long? Well, the, her for daughter 14 is 14, years, and then the other one's about to turn 14. Through this? Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, and if 14 years, this is the dynamic. I'm not buying your daughter a lot yeah. that she gets now. I, I could understand. You know what the issue is? The issue is that the guy doesn't understand the relationship between him and the baby mom. The reason why I say that is... He would like the baby mom to do him a favor by buying the stepdaughter a gift. But he's not posing it as do me a favor. No, he's he, trying to like guilt her in. Like, exactly. You, because you he have doesn't, to he do doesn't want to ask for a favor because now I asked you for a favor. Yeah. He said he she should be doing this. Yeah. Because he's trying to make her feel bad about it. But really what he's asking for is a favor. Mm-hmm. And. But he's trying to he was phrase it as it's like her she obligation. Would love him enough to do it love him after 14 years please she still loves him why do you say that that why we thought why are we talking through some app because clearly tensions were high because we and that's can't the thing. talk in regular life well no it's also like they probably keeps record of everything so that like it makes it easy if they ever have to go back to court for custody she and 
No, I She's think that really. maybe it was hard for her to move on in the beginning, but like they just continued talking through the app because that is how Shame they do their communication. On, as far as I'm concerned. But even if she hasn't, it, she still like, just like the last story, why does she have to, if the, that guy in the last story doesn't have to um, provide for those kids and send those kids to private school? No, step she kids, doesn't. I'm not that's not she even doesn't. her stepdaughter. No. That is my ex's child. Mm -hmm. Why I'm am I buying your present? I'm not saying she has to. I, I do believe and I, I understand the part where he's saying, like, it feels like you'd even try to make the sisters like each other. Um or have that kind of close relationship. But she's not with the two girls under the one roof. It's for him to bridge that gap. He I, is the gap. He is the he bridge. He is the gap. And and me and somebody from work had this conversation. It's very tough for kids not to feel what their parents feel towards somebody else. If there's a lady your mom doesn't like as a child, all you're going to see is everything your mom doesn't like about this lady. You're not going to be like, mom, the lady is actually really nice. Fair, Give but her then a by that token, the, uh, Both the ex's of them. Both wife, of them. The is wife uh, projecting yeah. onto her daughter and yes. she's projecting yes. onto. Yeah. 100%. So. They're both in the wrong in that sense. And I feel like as the middle guy, he's just kind of like, well, that's on you guys. But now he's trying to throw it in her he's face. He's not even saying that's on you. He's saying that's on you as in like the, yeah, the he's person trying to who throw wrote. It in her face now. Right. He's not to our knowledge, holding his wife accountable for her actions. But it's like, if y'all can't afford it, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, that's your problem. Buy that's your daughter a gift card. Cause buy it's her, like, yeah. as long as you guys are treating the kids equally, yeah, yeah. like if you could only get one, a, a gift card in a card, get then the other get one, one a gift card in a card. card. Yeah. She has another parent and that is a separate thing. Yeah. Like uh, not the asshole. Yeah. No, I agree. Not the asshole. She's not an asshole. Yeah. Did you, you're going to hit the gap? No, or? no. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was only when they're guilty. The verdict is well, no, you, ma'am, are not the asshole. You are the dick. I mean, I I can't co-sign that. No, I felt like that was good. Um. Okay. Am I the asshole for telling my friend her baby is the reason no one wants her around? Oh my god! One of my friends, oh my twenty-four god. female Anna. Oh, one of my. One of my 24 female friends and Anna, 24 female, had a baby around six months back. Our friend group is otherwise childless. All of us used to hang out a lot before the baby was born. Baby changed dynamics because Anna wanted to bring the baby everywhere with her and it's a baby. We tried to plan things around the baby to include Anna, but it always ended badly. We couldn't drink because Anna can't drink. We shouldn't be loud because baby needs to sleep. Icing on the cake is her baby is extremely fussy and cries all the time. It was just a downer for the rest of us. So we started hanging out without Anna and her baby. Last week, all of us went on a staycation. We had a great time and posted photos and videos on Instagram. Anna saw these and called me to ask why I did not ask her to come with. I tried telling her that it was a last minute plan and we could only find a child and could only find a child free resort so as to not hurt her feelings. Oh, so as to not hurt her feelings. She called my bluff, sending me pics some random family had posted with kids at the resort. She did her research. She kept forcing me, and I told her that we did not want to hang out with her baby. She asked, how can I say that about her baby? I asked her, to, <laughs> I asked her to leave it at that, but she wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I finally told her, it's a baby, and we are all young. We don't want to live our life around a baby she chose to have. That we get to do adult stuff and party all we wanted. Her baby is the only reason she wasn't invited. If she left the baby at home, she can come too. She got pissed off at me and called me an asshole. She also sent a group text, uh, a group text, a text in a group chat saying she's disappointed in all of us for excluding her just because she's a mom. Half of our friend group thinks I should have not told her the real reason and is mad at me. Other half thinks she is unreasonable. Am I the asshole for telling her the truth? And then she just, she added more. Do you want to hear the more? Do you want to? Uh, Let me answer first. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't think she's the asshole for telling her the truth. I agree. I think she's an asshole for making her dig for the truth. You did all of that runaround and in the end told her the truth. From the get-go, I'd have been like, listen. They were trying to save her feelings. Yeah, but then you just hurt her feelings more now. 
it's like I think her feelings would have been hurt regardless. Yeah, but, but I get it. Like I shouldn't have had to find out your planning events without me. And then, and then you find lie out that about way. it. Yeah. I went and I showed you proof, and you're still trying to lie about it. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the part you're an asshole about. Okay, go ahead. Mm-hmm. So she says from the comments, we have tried to communicate to her about adult only events before, other than openly saying don't come if you, uh, if you don't ha- if you have to bring your baby. She refuses to leave the baby with her boyfriend or a babysitter, even when we say the event is adults only, like a dinner we had a few weeks ago. She still brought her baby, and the baby cried throughout the night earning us glares and we had to leave early so i guess some comments were like we're yeah, trying to suggest try workarounds yeah i i hear i hear that i have a friend who has a hard time leaving uh their baby at home mm-hmm. so i can understand where she's coming from however the friend needs to know not every event you're going to be invited to and that's just that like i'm sorry you don't well, want to leave your child every at every event is child friendly especially exactly. for even if they're not young adults in your 30s 40s sometimes grown-ups just need be 100 time. i don't care i remember like you know like those parties like your your parents would have that it's like people can bring their kids but it's like kids in the basement or kids yeah, upstairs yeah, yeah, and then you know yeah. unless you have to say like mom like you you go down and all the all the adults are like but, what is it yeah but that's like, a child like you're talking about a baby, baby. Like, yeah come on yeah come on honestly no you're not an asshole um, your friend is just not understanding. Yep, you know, I don't even want kids at my wedding. Okay, <laughs> your your friend is not understanding, and she's going through what's it called after you have a baby? Post. She doesn't. She didn't say she went through postpartum. I think she is because some people have a lot of hard time. A lot of hard time. Have a hard time separating, like you know, being away from their newborns. No, I don't I'm, think it has I, to be I, postpartum. I feel like it does. I mean. Like if you if you never had attachment issues like that before, and now you have a child, I think it's especially you don't you you not being able to leave your child with the father if the father is capable of watching the child in a safe manner, that is an issue for me. Like you're gone for a couple hours. We're not stealing you for a yeah. week. Like we're going like I understand to a maybe not wanting to go on a staycation. staycation. Not even a staycation, a vacation or or a staycation like when your baby's young. Yeah. But also, you got to be away. Like, you need time for yourself, man. Right, because a happy, healthy parent. It makes the baby better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're not the, the asshole. You're, you're not the asshole. You're not. Don't feel like an asshole. Yeah. Whoever on Reddit or wherever told you you're an asshole, tell them. Well, she, the, the friend, told her baby mom. Oh, so, yes, yes, yeah. she, did. she did. No, you're not. <laughs> okay, we'll do one more. Okay. Um... Should I do, am I the asshole for refusing to let a guest use my room and kicking them out of my fiance's house? Sh- or should I do, am I the asshole for taking the largest slice of pizza because I paid for it? No, let's do the first one because the second one you're not. Or Get out of here. what about, am I the asshole for, you, for refusing to take in my sister's kids after her partner had a stroke so that I can go on my planned vacation? Oh one, one, two, or three. Oh, one or three is very intriguing. Yeah, two is kind of like. Yeah, like no. Get we the hell out just of here. heard the title. We're like, nah, the asshole. Oh, three is crazy. Ah, uh, but one is like, ooh. Honestly, I'm gonna say one because I need okay. to know the T. Why? Why they were? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. <clears throat> Am I the asshole for refusing to let a guest use my room and kicking them out of my fiance's house? I don't know how to format this, but I'm 32, my fiancé Jay is 41, and his friend Matt is about the same age. I know my fiancé has definitely given me spoiled princess treatment, and I don't know if that's coloring the way I see this or if I'm right. When Jay bought his house, it was a three-bedroom, three-bathroom, but he wanted a fireplace in his bedroom, so he converted the den, and now it's four bedrooms. But it doesn't have a closet and the nearest for the nearest bathroom is the smallest. He used the master bedroom for guests. I've been slowly uh-huh. moving. So he convert so three bedroom, three three bathroom. Yeah. But I guess he, he converted the den to another bedroom, but the den had the fireplace. So yeah. he's he basically turned the den into the master bedroom because he wanted the fireplace. Yeah, and then gave the master bedroom to guests, please. Yeah. With, with no closet. <laughs> And well, no, the, the no, he has no, he closet. has no closet, yeah, and the closest bathroom is small because it's not the master bathroom. Yeah. But that's that's his choice, right? It, yeah, he, it's his house. Yeah, it's it odd choice rather just put in the fireplace. But 
I don't know. I guess maybe it's not so that easy. Your to house, put in your choice. We could put in a little electric fireplace. Something, or something, yeah. Anyways, your house, your choice, right? Okay. He used the master bedroom for guests. I've been slowly moving in over the last few months, <laughs> and I brought up needing more space, and he gifted me the master bedroom as my personal space. I have plenty of room in the bathroom and closet, and I can use the room for my altar and my cats and stuff, and my cats' stuff. Plus, I'm chronically ill, and sometimes it's better to sleep alone. He turned his office into the new guest room, which is a much smaller space. I don't actually live there yet, though, and I won't for maybe six months. His friend Matt lives out of state but took a project in our city and was going to stay here with Jay for 12 weeks. The last time Matt visited, he was in the master bedroom, and I guess he was under the impression that he would be using that room again. He seemed surprised when he got there, but he didn't see... Uh, he got su- he was surprised when he got there, but he didn't say anything right away. It started after a couple days, though. Quote, it's such a small room for an extended stay, etc. Little comments and stuff, but it's been two weeks, and yesterday I was over putting my summer stuff away in the closet, and he came in to ask me if it would be okay, if I would be okay with him moving into that room, because he felt cramped in the other, and I declined. I already have stuff in there that I do not want anyone touching and I would be uncomfortable with him in there. He got upset and called me selfish and a pampered little princess and that he thought it was so weird that I was being like this when I don't even live here. I said it didn't matter. It's still my room and it'll be my house too soon. So who cares about technicalities? We argued and it escalated and it ended with me telling him to get the fuck out if he couldn't respect me. I think he thought Jay wouldn't let me do that, but he took my side and asked Matt to find an Airbnb for the rest of his stay. I ended up going home for the night, but I know Jay and Matt stayed up arguing about it for most of the night and their friendship is done. I was telling my sister about it this morning and I was surprised when she wasn't on my side. She said she couldn't understand why I'd tank my fiance's friendship when I could just let him use the room since I'm not even moved in yet. She accused me of taking advantage of my fiance and being selfish. And she's right. Jay will take my side even when I know I'm wrong. So him agreeing with me isn't a good litmus test. I don't think I'm wrong, but I, sorry, but I don't think I'm wrong. It's my room and I didn't want him in there. It's not like he had to sleep on the couch. It was just a small room. Am I the asshole? No. Okay, I say yes. I know you do. I know you say no. (laughs) I'm going to go first. I say no. She's not the asshole because she's right. It's her room. If it was empty or almost empty, that would be one thing. But she goes there. She switches out her summer clothes. She has her personal stuff, her cat stuff. It's her room. It's her space. I am someone who doesn't like people in my space unless you are invited into my space. So he has not been invited in by her. He has a perfectly good guest room. Just because it's smaller than the master, a hotel room would be smaller. Like, you know, unless you were going to go spend the big bucks for a suite. I don't think it's being the asshole. I do think her telling him to get the fuck out is where she went wrong because she could have just said, no take it or leave it she didn't have to say no and also pack your bags i think that's where she went wrong but for not letting him use the room she's not the asshole she has the right if you don't like i'm someone who doesn't like someone invading my personal space and that sounds like an invasion i didn't invite you in my space he asked it sounds like he asked politely and i politely declined and that's where it's gonna stay i i hear you and i knew you would say no because you have only child syndrome um and I understand where you're coming from. I definitely understand where you're coming from. But but she's not an only child one. She is a pampered little princess. I understand she's trying to say we don't. Did she say she's she not did. only child? No, she said she talked to her sister. Oh, her sister. Y- told you did. Her, yeah, 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 yeah. So for that reason, if she's saying, "Well, I have stuff in there. I don't want nobody to touch." Okay. If you want to take those stuff out, just take it out. I'm well, only, no, because I'm uh, here for twelve weeks, and I've been here for. A couple two. of days so far. No, she said it was about two weeks. That oh, he's been there for two yeah. weeks. So I have what ten weeks left. Like I'm not here forever. But and also, you don't sleep he here has, every night. He has the living room. He's not confined to the room like Harry come Potter on. under the under come the on. stairs. Come on. No. Come on. You come on. come on. It's not. She has the living room. It's 
even though it's your friend's house, you're not going to kick up on the couch feet. You're you're going to be in your room in your space. Would he still expect that if um his friend had the master bedroom? It's a master bedroom. You are not entitled to go into if, anyone's home no, 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 and no, no, have no. their but master the bedroom. Is, the last time we was here, the master bedroom was the guest room. So, yes, I'm planning. So what if his friend decided, oh, I want to switch back. So then why why didn't we have this conversation when you guys knew I was coming? Hey, by the way, you're going to be in this room. because well, that's da, 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 on da. his friend for not communicating the change so, of the room. That's on the boyfriend. And maybe I personally feel like the boyfriend thought the girlfriend would have been okay with him staying. Honestly, I do think he thought. But then when the girlfriend was upset, he was like, yeah, sorry, man. I'm going to choose my girl. You know, sorry. I'm really like... The fact that she tanked the friendship over a bedroom is what has me heated. That's the thing. I think she went too far kicking him out. Definitely, definitely. But I think she still is entitled to say no. She is entitled to say no. I'm not saying she's not entitled to and say I no. And I think her saying no asshole. shouldn't have tanked the friendship. But I think the, the, the get the fuck out and that's him, what tanked the friendship. him doubling down. Right. So, but if she said, am I, well, what was it? Is she the asshole for not giving up the room? No. But for kicking her fiance's, is it fiance, right? Yeah. yeah. For kicking him out, yes. The asshole um, for that. I am going to say she's an asshole for for not giving him the room, truthfully. I And maybe that's just because of my personality. Like, I would give somebody my room and sleep on the couch. Like, that's just me. Especially if that's a like, good friend and then of mine. people like to go through your stuff, open your drawers, look through your clothes, put on your... What stuff. kind of people do you guys know? Nosy ass, oh invasive ass God. people. I'm telling you, people do that shit. That's why I never try to be that guest. If uh. I am staying in your, in, in your home and there's like a nightstand, I won't open the nightstand. No, You could no have paraphernalia there. in there and I'm not going to... What you have in there? My bags, my everything is in my bag and it goes yeah. right back in my bag. Yeah, yeah simple but like, like i, I know don't people open who are... drawers at hotels <laughs> no people are very 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 invasive sometimes so i would definitely and because of it sounds like the level of friendship that him and the friend have i i respectfully would give him the room to be honest like you know maybe i wouldn't give him for the whole time but i'd be like you know honestly give me da 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 and you can have it for this much time i would try and find a middle ground if i'm not fully okay with you being in there for 10 weeks but the fact that she was just like, no. Well, 12 total, right? Well, 10 now because two is gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like he, he tried out the room for, you know, yeah, certain rooms no, are. No, I don't think anything is wrong with requesting. Yeah. Him asking. Yeah. And it sounds like he asked politely. But I can understand no, if the answer is no. Is no but you're, you're getting you're a, pl a place to stay no, for free. Stale. You better hit up that Airbnb. Hey, give them a five star and rating. Now me and my friend are fall. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fallout with my friend still. Because your girl is out of pocket, and the fact that you, you no, she, her like she was this out of pocket crazy. for it's for crazy. kicking him out because I asked to stay in your room. Bitch, you don't even live here. But I will in six months. <laughs> like, bitch, I'll be gone by then. You know what I'm saying? Can I use the room? You, Listen, it's not a crazy request, <sighs> but the answer is no, and you need to respect people's property and and her properties in that room. And then you're mad and surprised that your sister didn't agree with you. Yeah, because your sister also thinks this guy pampers you. What's wrong with being a pampered princess? Everyone wants to be a pampered princess. Yeah, no, you, no. Even you want to be a pampered I princess. I do, I do. I want to be a housewife. That's what I'm saying. Like, so, so you mad at her because she can? Because she is. Yeah, she's doing it all wrong. She's ruining it for the rest of us. I would love. You know what? That's the dream. Like, have like a bedroom that I can like share with my partner, but then also but in my own share, bedroom. Yeah. No, it's like a we can sleep together. But like, you know, like I get like headaches. Like, I have a migraine. Like, I'm going to my room. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like. That'd be yeah. cute. Because, like, be I, d I don't want to... Cute to you because you want your own space, but to your partner... No, because they get their own, too. Yeah, but maybe they don't want their own. To be honest, I'd probably just end up sleeping with them every night anyways. But, like... <laughs> no, but it's, like, before bed... At least I have the choice. Yeah, like, I'm chilling yeah. in my room. I'll be to bed soon. Like, yeah. oh! oh! <laughs> yeah, I like that one. I like that one. J Money on the mic. <laughs> Chill in my room. I'll be in my bed soon. Jeez. Chicka, chicka, chicka. <laughs> I got the headphones on already. <laughs> um, uh, so how do we go about this? Because I say guilty. You say not guilty. We will go with your verdict only because I agree with you on the kicking out part. Okay. So we will say overall she is the okay. asshole. Overall. But I just, we have to like honorable mention that I still stand by the. Yes. Yes. I, I hear you. You're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Not yeah, yeah, guilty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> guilty of being an asshole. <laughs> um, okay. That was fun. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. See, the thing is, I knew you'd like it because we're always down for other people's Oh, 100%. <laughs> always, always. Um, 
speaking of other people's business before we get into like well i think it's all other people other people's business for the rest of the episode but do you want to do a listener yeah. question before we do the other okay. stuff yeah more more people's business. yeah like well, why not yeah okay so uh listener question if you are listening or watching and you want to be a part of the podcast with your own question your own story scenario whatever it is write into us at this square room dot com um okay today let me see so this person is anonymous subject line obsessed obsessed so um <clears throat> he says i feel like my boy is trying to take my girl ha! let me explain me and this guy let's call him g have been boys for a couple years now my guy we met through school and are a part of the same friend group. A few months ago, I started dating someone and she's absolutely amazing. Let's call her M. However, since I started dating her, G has been literally copying me at everything. He has been buying the same clothes as me, cutting his hair like me, speaking like I do, even picking up some of my hobbies that he had never had interest in before. Now, I've known him for years and he never did any of this. So I think he's obsessed with me. So I don't think he's obsessed with me personally. However, I think ever since M has been coming around, G goes out of his way to be a stand-up guy and make her laugh, be super sweet to her, and all my friends, I'm sorry, and be super sweet to her, period. All my friends are respectful to my girlfriend, but he is going above and beyond. I feel like he's trying to be a better me than me. Maybe he thinks if he becomes a better version of me, um, <clears throat> of everything M likes about me, he will stand a chance with her. I'm not too sure. But everyone else in our friend group who knew G before M started coming around agrees that he is acting weird. I've made comments every now and then about his changes and the similarities they have to me, which he's denied or pretended he didn't notice. However, I have not straight up confronted him about his flirtatious behavior towards M on top of all the other stuff. I don't really like confrontation, so I've avoided it for a while, but it's starting to really bother me and my friends all think I should say something. What do you guys think? And thanks for whatever advice you have for me. Des, go ahead, because I know you're itching. Um, okay. Honestly, if I were you, I would be flattered that my friend wants to copy me. I understand my girl is perfect. I get it. Honestly, she is. Like, I don't know what to tell you. That's why, you know, <laughs> she likes me. You know, we click together. Cool. He's trying to be like you. He's trying to look like you, talk like you, trying to walk like you. Yeah, that like uh, Pussycat Doll song? No, it's from Pussycat Doll. Oh, it's Girlicious? Oh, I'm thinking of um, Jungle Book. Oh, okay, of, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know um, that one too. So I, I think it's very flattering that he's doing that. Maybe he was trying to find his own identity. And sometimes people will copy certain things they like about someone. I do agree, though. The timing is weird. The timing is very suspicious. You never copied anything. Never. And then all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. But I can understand that because maybe him seeing, whoa, you got this girl? Really? Okay. Now he's starting right, to... Right, but he's not just copying and then projecting out to other women. He's zoning in on M. I, I I personally don't think he is purposely zoning in on M. I really believe, like, for for a lot of guys who aren't used to certain attention, when a girl giggles at them, oh, you think I'm funny? So you're always going to try and make that one person laugh and make side comments to that one person because everybody else is just like, <laughs> uh, whatever. And move on. But this person seems, honestly, if you are confident and comfortable with your and M's relationship, don't even worry about that. If you feel like, yeah, there's. Call him out. Call him out. Uh, I want chaos. <laughs> I want drama. <laughs> Call the son of a bitch out. Let me tell you something. Uh, what's his name? G. Let me tell you something. G. G. Wanna be G. G. You say you don't you don't F you you don't see the <laughs> Okay. Oh, corny. Oh, corny. Sorry, sorry, I try. I try. <laughs> but it's like, okay, you say you don't see the similarities, you say you don't realize, or you just brush it off. Cool. What you need to do is back up off my woman. Cause you're doing too much. And if he's like, oh, my bad, my bad, be like, it's cool. It's cool. If it was not intentional, we're cool. It's no drama. It's nothing. However, 
now that he knows that you know and you're watching, if his behavior doesn't change, then you know it's intentional. But if he backs up, then maybe it's like a dead situation. Maybe he just didn't realize he was being extra nice or flirtatious or whatever. But once he knows you're watching him, he won't pull that shit unless he really thinks he's slick. And if you think he's slick... <laughs> was that your punch? <laughs> 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 Um, Fuck what, you. <laughs> one thing I will say is to ask your girlfriend how she feels. If she's like, oh, like, please, like, I don't even care, like, whatever, whatever, then honestly, I really would say leave it alone. Call him out. If your girl's like, honestly, I've been noticing and it's kind of uncomfortable, if, now you're making my girl uncomfortable, now we're going to have to talk about it. If she's uncomfortable, I'm going to have to press you now. Call him out. Yeah. If she's not uncomfortable and still she- call him out. Because I'm uncomfortable. He doesn't like it. He's uncomfortable. You're my friend. I don't care if my significant other is not comfortable with it. I'm mad. Yo, I don't care if M is uncomfortable or not. Whether she is or not, he needs to be called out. Because if they're supposed to be friends, boys from school for years, I'm calling you out. Because your behavior is affecting moi. I don't like it. Fix yourself. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. You know what I'm saying? Call him out. Call him out anonymous and let us know. Yeah, what's going to happen is... When you know, call him out, put us on three-way. You know, we want to be on the call, 100%. too. I'm mute, though. I'm mute. I swear, I'm mute. <laughs> I'm mute like Beyonce, you know? <laughs> um, I think if you do call him out, honestly, if you talk to him about it, I think what's going to happen is it, he's going to seem like he's not doing nothing, but he's going to talk to her on the lows. Like, you know, send her little DMs here and there, like funny memes and dumb shit like that. And it's going to seem harmless. The audacity. And it's going to make it seem like you're crazy. It's going to make it seem like you're doing too much. I think that when people think they're getting away with shit and they're being slick, they keep doing it. But when they when you call it and like you don't have to call them out in like a, a mean way. Just be like, yo, like I've been noticing this. Like, what's good? Letting him know that, you know, because you, cause you don't you don't like confrontation. So you're not going to call him out like the way I was saying, obviously. But just alerting him that like, hey, there's been stuff going on that I'm not liking. What's 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 going on with you? And if he plays dumb, no matter what answer you get, it's not the answer that matters. It's the fact that he knows that you know. And now he's going to be hyper vigilant of his actions. And if he continues to disregard your actions, now we really have a problem. And if he backs up, good. Problem solved. And we didn't have to get into a big thing. See, but if I if I'm if I'm G and you bring that up to me and I really feel like it was nothing. I just feel uncomfortable all around now. Like, I don't even want to be around you guys because you turned Good, nothing. bye. I wasn't missing you anyways. Looking at you is like looking in a mirror. And if I could just look in a mirror and not deal with your ass, then whatever. The tribe has spoken. Call them out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for writing in. That was a that was an interesting one. Yeah. Hopefully it no, all no, goes no. well. We need to know. Even if it doesn't go well, we need to know. <laughs> yeah, but we're hoping it goes well. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if anyone else needs some advice, am I hoping it goes well? Yes, uh, we want the drama not for our listeners. We want the drama for other people. That's why we read Am I the Assholes. They can keep the drama. We okay, want fine. we want our people to like be good, you know. But yes, uh, this room dot com. If you also want to write in, if you have a question or anything, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So a less fun note. Womp womp. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the other day I was at work and one of my friends came to me and was like, oh, Des, did you see, let's say D. Did you see D? I was like, oh, no, I didn't. They're like, oh, you know, she looks pretty sad, you know. Go see what's up. And in my head, I'm like, why don't you go see what's up? I'm like, oh, okay, no problem. So I go over, I see where she's working. You know, I like to be the haha funny guy. So I walk up to her. Before I could say a word, she looks at me and she's like, Des, I've been bawling my eyes out all night. And I was like, yeah, I saw you earlier and you look so sad. Because I don't want to be like, yeah, this person saw and they didn't ask you. Mm-hmm. They came to, yeah. So I'm like, yeah, you know, I I saw you earlier and yeah, you did look on? pretty, yeah. And she's just like, yeah, I just found out. So on the news, and I know this because my cousin was talking about it that day. Um, she was saying that there was a shooting in Toronto and... You know, I knew about the shooting, whatever, whatever. And the person who got shot was one of her close friends. Like fatally? And they were on life support. So she didn't know that it was him until she was at work and got the message. Mm. And she's like, she has been bawling because 
she said for her what it really is is her and this person were like really close but you know life happens and you kind of distance a bit mm. and she's not very good with the texting and the reaching out like we talked about last week and mm-hmm, stuff mm-hmm. and she was like she's always meant to like hey how's it going and now it's like shit so she was balling 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 i'm like you know don't worry about you know do you want to talk about it and she was just like honestly like i'm trying to just focus on work to not cry but like obviously i'm in my own head blah 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 i'm like okay call me after work and you know we can talk about it and you know you can get it off your chest and stuff uh, she didn't end up calling, but I sent her a message like, hey, you know, I hope you feel better. I hope blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And she said since then, she's been making it a point to just reach out to people that she wants to mm-hmm. because she thinks about it, but she doesn't do it. But now she's going to think Sometimes about it. Sometimes we take time for granted. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So later that day, um, I think I'd messaged her again like, hey, you know, I hope everything pulls through with him. She's, you know, she was contemplating on visit him, but she was scared to see him in that condition and blah, blah, blah. And the next that night. So a night later, we were speaking about it again. And she's like, you know what? I think I will visit him. Da, da, da. Got a message. He passed away. Gone. I was like, ah, oh, shit. That sucks. And then she was trying to reach out to another friend and, you know, just, hey, what's going on? Somebody she was kind of talking to, but, you know, whatever was going on with that. And he told her that it seems like she's obsessed, possessive. Hmm? It was giving possessive vibes. Oh, sorry, that. Yep. Took a turn. Yep. First of all, rest in peace to the homie. Like, that's super sad, but. Huh? How do we? She get- was like, "Hey, what's up?" And he's like, "Oh, nothing much." And she's like, "Oh, I noticed that you know you haven't been, you know, you've been ghosts. Like, what's going on?" And he's like, "Honestly, like, you're giving possessive vibes." All shit turned upside down after that. She said, "Just to check in, like, I haven't heard from you in a while. That's possessive. Run, girl, run." She said, "You don't need that person oh, in your yeah? life." Oh yeah. Okay. Bye. What did he say? What I don't know. Okay. Then she lost it. Well, what, what did she expect fellas, him to say? Fellas, the worst thing you can do to a girl after she is obviously upset is okay. Ha! Ha! But like... What she wanted, and I can understand that, is I'm checking in on you. You're like, oh, this is giving possessive vibes. And I'm like, oh, my bad. Bye. I need you to be like, no... X, Y, you know, that's what she would have preferred. I get it. But also, it sounds like not someone who's reasonable if that's like where their mind jumps right away. So, like, why are we trying to. And yeah, all hell, with... all hell broke loose after that. Yeah. And it's funny because I was hearing both them, both their stories at the same time. So she's calling me, ranting about what he's saying, and he's telling me live about what. Oh, you he's... know him? Ah! Yeah! You know the wetless man? Yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Yeah. Why am I not surprised you know a man like that? Oh, come on. What it's did you now? Did he explain? So he said um he felt like it wasn't as simple as she's making it seem. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I'm just checking in on you. He didn't feel like that. He felt like it was like a oh, we used to message all the time. Where are you now? Da 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 da. And he was like, "Oh, did I've- you see the messages from either one of them?" Yes. He showed what me the do message. You feel like? I told him he was wrong. Okay. I was like, you know, she's not trying to be that. You have to understand where her brain is at and da 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 da. And he's like, Des, I hear you, but da da da. So while I'm talking to him, I'm talking to her and she's losing it. Whoa, fuck this. <laughs> it was really funny, to be honest. Uh, Cause you know, I love the tea. Mm. Uh, so it was really funny. And I guess um, he had lent her something, like a cup or something. And she like smashed it. He was like, oh, you know, we don't have to talk. Just give me my cup back. You know, you can give it to Des. And she, fuck your cup. I'm going to break that shit. Da, da, da. And that really hurt him. He was really mad. Like he. So she had messaged if, him. If, what she should have done when he's like, can I have my cup back? I'm like, yo, it's, it's giving possessive. Like, it's just a cup. Like, it's giving, <laughs> it's giving really possessive. Like He was really mad that she said she was going to throw it out. But she wasn't going to throw it out. She just said it to piss him off. Obviously. It's a cup. What is it? A golden chalice? Like, it's not that serious. So so then she um, she had blocked him. Yeah, she blocked him for a while. Because obviously you need your space. You think I'm giving possessive? No problem. 
So she had blocked him. They didn't talk. And then she had unblocked him only to find out that he had blocked her, which pissed her off even more. Because why are you blocking me? Mm -hmm. What did I do to you, buddy? So then it was just a whole it's back a and no forth It's a no-win situation. Yeah. And obviously I got in the middle of it and I forced them to talk. Obviously. Yeah. And then he had unblocked her. Did we come to a resolution? No, of course not. We just no, acted like whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It was really funny. Oh, my God. That was not where I thought you were going no, with that story. No, oh, my no. gosh. It was great. It was great. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, do our question of the day. Um, why do you think we met? Would you like to go first why or I shall I? Or, like, is this like a fate question? Or I like, guess. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm like, I know why we met. Because I'm a fucking creep. Because you, yeah, well, like, yeah. I think we've told the literal reason why. Yeah, yeah. I guess, like, do you feel like there's like a bigger purpose? Um, I can say. Yeah. I feel like, especially at a young age, you taught me a lot about people, mostly boys and men. Okay. You know, you were the person in high school. I call you like, oh, this boy's doing this. And you'd like give me like advice your from advice. our perspective. And sometimes yeah. not even just you, like my friend would be like, yo, call Des, call Des. We'll have a three way. Like we need to ask him. And like that's really valuable for a young woman mm. just to like understand uh, like the, the mind of a man and like prevent dumb bitchery. And like you're just one man. You can't prevent it all <laughs> on your own. But no, like I do think it helped me a lot. And then just you know, our friendship, especially how it evolved like into like our 20s and stuff. Like yeah. I feel like you were just put in, into my life to be a good friend. Like, I don't know. It's I don't think it's that complicated, but like a good friendship is is worth a lot. It's funny. And it brought us here to this podcast and to all to of this, this and to like entertaining people yeah. and like you know, when, when you guys are like writing in and you guys tell us how much you like the podcast or how, you know, when you're down, you listen to it or you go back and you listen to episodes, that makes me feel good. And like, that's part of the reason. Yeah. And that all stems from the friendship and from everything. So, yeah. no, that was, that was really good. That I was know. nice. That was nice. That was like me last week. That was nice. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. yeah, no, that, wow. that, that would make sense. That would sum it up. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> he, I, he basically said what she said. <laughs> yeah. What I like the most is like, there's gaps where like we either could have stopped talking forever or like we have stopped talking for a long time and like things just are just like like you'd be like like when I came to the door you're just like hmm I don't even know if I want to let you in and then I had a little gift for you and you're like okay <laughs> I tried to take it and, and let yeah, you go about your yeah. business but you didn't let that happen <laughs> um, yeah so I feel like like just those things, like I said before, like for me, like I'm very consistently inconsistent. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you can understand that and like I said, you're very understanding. Look at this. Look at this. Come back here. Full circle. Jeez. You don't know what he's talking about. This last week's question of the day. Check it out. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I agree with what you said for sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's that was a, nice. That was a nice. I question. know. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys for being here for our little moment and for the whole episode. Hopefully, y'all didn't just skip through. <laughs> um, but yeah, same time, same place. See you next Tuesday. Bye.